We start in Yemen because attacks on Houthis in the country by aircraft from the United States and the United Kingdom would not go without punishment or retaliation. That's what a Houthi military spokesman has said. His vow to continue its support for Palestinians in Gaza and attacks on ships in the Red Sea. Well, Iran, which has long backed the Houthi, said the strikes were a clear violation of Yemen's territorial integrity. Well, according to the U.S., more than 12 sites were hit across Yemen, including what America says were Houthi command and control centers. Well, munitions depots, launching systems, production facilities and air defense radar systems were also included. Among the areas targeted, the capital Sana'a and the port of Haideda. Well, this U.S. military took off from an aircraft carrier. The U.S. Air Force says its planes and those of its allies struck more than 60 targets at 16 locations, all of which were being used by the Houthis. Well, four Typhoon warplanes from the U.K.'s Royal Air Force also took part in the mission. They flew from Cyprus, carrying guided bombs. All four aircraft returned to base. Four other countries, Australia, the Netherlands, Canada and Bahrain, provided support to the mission. So, who exactly are the Houthis and what do they want? Here's an explainer which should make this a little clearer. The Houthis are an armed group from the subsect of Yemen's Shia Muslim minority, the Zaydis. They are a political and military group who control a large part of Yemen. Most of the Yemeni population lives in areas under Houthi control. As well as Sana'a and the north of Yemen, the Houthi rebels control the Red Sea coastline. The group was formed in the 1990s to combat what they saw as the corruption of the then president, Ali Abdullah Saleh. President Saleh, backed by Saudi Arabia's military, tried to eliminate the Houthi movement in 2003, but the Houthis repelled them both. Iran is suspected of supplying the Houthis with weapons and the US says Iranian intelligence is critical to enabling them to target ships. The Houthi movement have been fighting a civil war since 2014 against Yemen's government. The government has been backed against the Houthis by a coalition of Arab countries led by Saudi Arabia and the UAE. The Houthis model themselves on the Shia armed group in Lebanon, Hezbollah. Hezbollah has been providing them with extensive military expertise and training since 2014, according to the US Research Institute, the Combating Terrorism Centre. Well, for more on this, let's speak to our security correspondent, Frank Gardner. And uh, Frank, first of all, let's talk about who the Houthis are. I explained it there as best I could, but there is a lot more going on, isn't there, in terms of how uh, what is happening in Yemen is viewed globally as a proxy war between Iran and Saudi Arabia. Yeah, although there has been a quite a delicate truce that it seems to be holding, which is why the Saudis don't want it to get involved in this at all. They're keeping their heads down. The Saudi foreign minister has called for restraint. The Saudis got themselves into a real mess in Yemen. They went in in April, spring of 2015, uh, thinking that using their superior weaponry, they could bomb these relatively unsophisticated, poorly armed, poorly organized, rabble-like militia straight to the negotiating table. And I went down to Riyadh at the time to the something called the Coalition Air Operations Center, and I interviewed Saudi senior military officials who said, ah, it'll all be over by the end of the year. It's taken eight years and the Houthis are still in place and they've only got stronger. So although we call them the, the Houthi rebels and they are the illegitimate um, government of Yemen, they're only recognized by Syria and Iran, they're not recognized by the UN. Nevertheless, they are the de facto government of most of the populated areas of of Yemen. And they've now got a very powerful arsenal of cruise missiles, ballistic missiles, drones that Iran has helped train them to use and to assemble and to fire. And while they were fighting the Saudis for much of the last decade, um, they fired off a huge number of these at targets inside Saudi Arabia. One month alone, uh, March 2021, they fired over 300 drones and missiles at targets in Saudi Arabia. So that's why there's a deafening silence from Saudi. They can't stand the Houthis, but they don't want to antagonize them.
Let's talk about this in terms of, the, of how it's viewed globally, because globally, what is happening now, in, particularly in terms of the Houthi attacks and uh, the Houthis themselves, see it very differently, don't they? The Houthis in the Middle East see it as in the prism of the Israeli-Gaza conflict, whereas uh, global Western powers like UK and US see the attacks that the Houthis are doing on the Red Sea in terms of you know, shipping and the global economy. That's exactly right, yes. I mean, the, the Houthis started attacking shipping and firing missiles towards Israel from the beginning of November. I think it was November the 19th. Um, and very much part of their creed is death to Israel. Uh, they've been anti-Israel and anti-West for a, really ever since they've been in existence for most of the last two decades. Um, but you're right. So it's not just the US and Britain, although they are the ones who've carried out these airstrikes with some support. Um, you've got to remember that in the last 48 hours, there's been quite a decisive UN Security Council resolution um, that although four countries abstained, Russia, China, Angola, and Mozambique, um, it wasn't vetoed by anybody. And that UN Security Council resolution condemned the unequivocally the Houthi attacks on shipping. So it's not popular with global trade. It's driving up prices all over the world. It's going to, it's going to fuel inflation. It's going to... Um, give rise to increasing fuel costs. But you're absolutely right. What the Houthis are doing is playing to the gallery. It's very popular, this domestically, um, to be rallying to the Palestinian cause. And that will re resonate throughout the Middle East, not just in Yemen. OK, Frank, as always, thank you so much for your analysis. And it's that uh, worry, isn't it, about the economy, about what's happening along that shipping area, which is uh, pushing Western powers to worry about this more than uh, perhaps they might. How, however, will Houthis react to these strikes or how could they potentially react to the strikes? Here's our BBC international editor, Jeremy Bowen, with his analysis. The Iranians are their allies. They're often talked about as Iranian proxies, but that's not correct. They're allies, really. And I've spent quite a bit of time with the Houthis over the years in Yemen. And they are people who are highly independently minded. Uh, they, are, they have a relish for getting involved in this kind of thing. They want to be involved in the war. And so the Iranians have very much beefed up the kind of firepower that they have. They even have... Um, anti-ship missiles, they have various kinds of ballistic missiles they can fire off, as well as drones. So they are well armed, of course, compared to the United States and to the capacities that the Royal Navy also have on their ship there. It's nothing like it. I think it's less the physical damage, it's more the fact that this is a, a dangerous situation for navigation. Yes, they have taken a ship, they've actually hijacked a ship and, and forced it into one of their ports. Uh, they have also um, fired off weapons towards them and caused some damage. It's not like they've sunk things. But the fact is that clearly commercial shipping companies who want to get very valuable cargoes through the very narrow 16-mile-wide Bab al-Manda Strait, which is at the, the mouth of the Red Sea, do not want to have uh, hostile forces firing at them, apart from anything else, uh, insurance costs and the rest of it go rocketing up and that's why they're taking that two-week detour around the Cape of Good Hope. Well that's Jeremy Bowen with his analysis there. Well uh, let's bring it back now to the UK and uh, take stock of the UK political uh, fallout. So let's cross live as you saw there to our correspondent in Westminster, Peter Saul. Peter we saw you for a second there, come back, there you are. Hello. Uh, tell me a bit more <laughs> Peter about how this is going down in at Westminster amongst all the different parties. Yes, well, ministers have been actually thinking about airstrikes on Houthi rebels for some time. It's been talked about within government since before Christmas, but it all came to a head last night, really, when the Americans decided that they wanted to carry out these airstrikes. The UK government wanted to go with them, so there was a hastily convened call of cabinet ministers. The leader of the main opposition party, Sir Keir Starmer, the leader of the Labour Party, was invited to a call uh, too, and they have now gone ahead with it. Um, just this morning as well, actually, we've had publication of a, of a legal summary and the advice that the government received as to why it believes this action is justified under international law. It talks about the, that the attacks will continue unless action is taken to deter them and that this is the only feasible means available to deal with it, that it's necessary and proportionate. Clearly, lots of 
risks there. How might the Houthis respond to this? Does it risk an escalation in the wider uh, region? But there are some economic considerations too. The UK government very keen to bring down inflation with ships travelling all the way around the African continent. That might push up costs for consumers in the UK. We've already seen a slight impact in terms of the oil price going up. But let's have a listen to the Armed Forces Minister, James Heapy, defending the government's actions. A warning was issued to the Houthis uh, by a large number of nations over a week, away, a week ago uh, to say to them that they should not continue in their attacks of shipping. They did. Indeed, they attacked Royal Navy and US Navy warships only 48 hours ago. That warning remains in place, but it's very important that people are clear that last night's mission was uh, a mission in self-defense to disrupt the Houthi capacity to launch attacks on US Navy, Royal Navy warships uh, and wider commercial shipping in the region. Now, the other thing that's being discussed here in Westminster is whether or not MPs should have been consulted before this action was taken. Generally, but not always, there's a vote in Parliament on military action overseas. We've got people on the left of the Labour Party, for example, saying that this potentially could really escalate things in a very delicate part of the world. The leader of the Labour Party, Sir Keir Starmer, who I mentioned earlier, though, is backing the government. Yes, we are supporting this action. The Houthi attacks have been carried out now for some time in the Red Sea. It's on commercial shipping. That's civilians who are operating that commercial shipping. And um, not only is it disrupting uh, trade and shipping, but of course it's putting civilian lives at risk. And therefore, um, we do support this action. I do want the Prime Minister, obviously, to make a statement to Parliament as soon as possible, because the scope, nature and extent of the operation needs to be explained. And we are expecting Rishi Sunak to give a statement in the House of Commons on Monday, as Keir Starmer mentioned there. The other opposition parties, the SNP, the Liberal Democrats, Plaid Cymru, all saying that Parliament should be recalled over the weekend to discuss this. The House of Commons Speaker, Sir Lindsay Hoyle, said he'd be happy to arrange that. It does appear unlikely at this stage, and it also appears unlikely that there would be a retrospective vote next week on whether this action should have taken place or not. The question is whether the UK does any more attacks. And if they were to do that, I think there would be quite significant political pressure to hold a vote in the House of Commons. Peter, thank you very much indeed for that. Well, let's bring you some new lines that we're getting from the Prime Minister Rishi Sunak. As Peter mentioned there, there will be a statement made to Parliament on Monday. At number 10, Downing Street has also rejected criticism that the strikes against the Houthis were not proportionate. In fact, a spokesperson for the Prime Minister also rejected claims made by Turkey's President Recep Tayyip Erdogan that the UK and US are trying to turn the Red Sea into, in his words, a sea of blood. Uh, the spokesperson said, we wouldn't agree with that. This was limited and targeted strikes in response to aggression. We acted into self-defence in accordance with Article 51 of the UN Charter. Of course, we'll have more on those statements from Rishi Sunak's people imminently. Now, though, let's uh, cross live and join Dr Siddharth Kaushal, Research Fellow on Sea Power and Military Sciences at the Royal United Services Institute. It's good to talk to you. Thank you so much for joining us here on BBC News. Um, I suppose what I want to get from you today is where we think the Houthis' response potentially could lie and how damaging that could be. Um, sure. So uh, in some ways, uh, in order to maintain pressure on, on international shipping, the Houthis don't necessarily have to be very uh, tactically effective. They simply need to, in effect, keep doing what they're doing, because even if uh, warships in the Red Sea achieve a quite high intercept rate against um, their missiles and UAVs, uh, you know, commercial shipping may well choose to avoid uh, the straits entirely. So I suppose the, the key question for the coalition now is whether the Houthis interpret the statement of intent uh, that's been made through these strikes as holding the risk of more to come if they, if they don't desist, or whether they regard it as uh, as a set of losses that they can shrug off and, and effectively continue their their pre their pre strike uh, strategy. Well, which one do you think they will go for then? Um, it, it's hard to say for sure right now. 
Uh, it, it is notable that uh, in his statement this morning, the movement's leader on the one hand threatened escalation as you would expect, but on the other hand seemed to take pains to underscore that the Houthis were not intent on attacking vessels that were not headed towards Israel, which you know might be interpreted as, as a, an attempt on their part to, uh, to climb down, but it's hard to say and, and you know it's entirely possible that the Houthis continue to indiscriminately attack uh, shipping transiting the Red Sea. Uh, the target set that was chosen was quite broad, however, and included what might be quite high value targets for the Houthis. So one would think that that might be something they interpret as a serious statement of intent. Okay, Dr. Siddharth Kaushal, good to talk to you. Thank you once more for your time. Thank you. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News. Well, let's stay with those strikes in Yemen and hear from Lord Dannett, crossbench peer and former head of the British Army. He explained why the UK and US committed to military action. This situation has been building over the last uh, few days and a couple of weeks. And we've seen evidence, growing evidence, of attacks by Houthi uh, missiles and drones on international shipping uh, in the Red Sea. And of course, that has begun to have quite a significant effect, um, diverting a lot of international shipping around the Cape, obviously extending uh, journey times for international trade and international commodity uh, and increasing the costs of shipping. And that obviously is going to have an effect on domestic economies. So the decision has been, I think, quite rightly taken that uh, action must be taken against the Houthis to stop them attacking international shipping, to protect the international sea lanes of the world. And hence, we've seen the action that began uh, late last night. Well, let's stay with that story now. And as I mentioned a few minutes ago, Rishi Sunak has been speaking for the first time since those strikes last night. He is currently in Ukraine. Let's have a listen. Prime Minister, very straightforward question. Why did you authorise the military action against uh, Houthi targets in Yemen? Well, over the last month, we've seen a significant increase in the number of Houthi attacks on commercial shipping in the Red Sea. That's putting innocent lives at risk. It's disrupting the global economy. Uh, and it's also uh, destabilizing the region. Uh, and in that time, we've also seen the single biggest attack on a Navy warship, a British Navy warship that we've seen in decades. Now, it's clear that that type of behavior can't carry on. That's why we join with allies in issuing very public condemnation of this behaviour. And it's why I made the decision with allies to take what I believe to be necessary, proportionate and targeted action against military targets to degrade and disrupt Houthi capability. We won't hesitate to protect lives and ensure the safety of commercial shipping. What happens if it doesn't work, if it doesn't deter the Houthis? Well, we've carried out a series of strikes together with allies, which will, we believe, degrade and disrupt the capability. The types of things that we've targeted are launch sites for missiles and for drones. Initial indications are that those strikes have been successful. Um, we'll continue to monitor the situation. Uh, but it's clear that this type of behaviour can't be met without a response. We need to send a strong signal that this breach of international law is wrong. Uh, people can't act like this with impunity. And that's why, together with allies, we've decided to take this action. Any fears about escalation? Well, look, our aim is very clear. It's to de-escalate tensions and to restore stability to the region. And that's why allies over the past few weeks have issued several statements of condemnation of what's happening, calling on the Houthis to desist. Indeed, just this week, we've seen a UN Security Council resolution condemning what's happening and, and saying that states have a right to self-defense. We have acted in self-defense. It's incumbent now on the Houthis to stop carrying out these attacks, putting people's lives at risk and disrupting the global economy, which will also have a damaging impact on, on people's uh, shopping and the, their day-to-day -day, uh, shopping when they go about their lives. That's not right. We've seen the disruption that that's brought over the past year or two with the situation in Russia and Ukraine. We don't want to see that happen again. And that's why it's right that we've taken action. Well, good final thought. Um, some MPs said uh, Parliament should have been consulted first. Well, 
I chaired a COBRA meeting yesterday, convened cabinet and relevant opposition politicians were informed. Every case is, is different. What we have done here is take limited and necessary action in response to a specific threat in self-defence. And if you look at similar situations in 2015 and 2018, a statement was made to parliament after the uh, action. And that's what I will be doing on Monday. I'll be making a full statement in parliament and taking questions then.